Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here uh, with another hot take. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you so much for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books, Woke a a Novel, the sequel coming very soon, editing it right now, and of course, The Pineys, books one through five, available at Amazon.com. Also, subscribe to me on BitChute because uh, despite what's going on, despite the sort of YouTube renaissance, we are also experiencing the YouTube censorship. And channels like mine may disappear in if Biden pulls this out or even if it even if he doesn't. So make sure you have an account at BitChute. Make sure you subscribe to me and all your favorites, especially if they are political. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. Now, today, Joan, not paying attention as always, there is a new website called Here is the Evidence. Uh, due to the irregularity of this current 2020 presidential election, says the website, this is a crowdsourcing tool for organizing anomalies and legal issues. Our desire is that more of the election process would be made transparent so there will be unquestionable confidence in our voting systems. This is for aggregating items of evidence that would be admissible in court, not general election news stories or updates. Submitted items may be edited or in some cases deleted by moderators to ensure the quality of content. Now, I cannot say either way for this website. I don't know who runs it. This could be uh, a, a front to get people to submit their evidence so they can make it disappear for all I know. So if you have any evidence, make sure you've got plenty of extra copies of it and you don't give up the originals uh, unless you're giving them to Rudy Giuliani or Sidney Powell or someone with an actual position in the, you know, in, in this situation, I'll say. Um, don't just hand it all over and have no copies of it. Be smart. The guy who got the Hunter uh, Biden laptop, which you haven't heard much about that recently, uh, he made copies of everything. It was smart. You got to have copies. You got to have copies. And it's so easy to make copies. So make copies. Whether... And, and you can see some of the things that are here. Discarded mail-in ballots found outside ATM in California. Found Navy ballot envelopes in a dumpster. U.S. decried election with expelled observers, absentee boxes, and 90% turnout. Uh, 2016, Georgia had evidence that the DOHS IP address tried to hack voter database. Uh Florida precinct reports more than 100% turnout. Rejected absentee ballots, 3.5% in 2018 to 0.3% in 2020, despite 500% uh, more votes. And it just goes on and on. Now, can I vouch for any of this evidence? No. It has to be vetted. It has to be verified. Uh, however... This is a place so you could start your search. You could look at things. You can add things. If you have something legit, don't mess around with this. Uh, people are people are obviously working hard on this. Um, let's just check out the first one. Discarded mail-in ballots found outside the ATM. This is the source. Oh, okay. So it's, it's linking to, this is linking to various news sources. This is from Newsweek. Uh, this one. This one's off of Twitter. Uh, so that's just some random person who found that. This is... Oh, I could just look. It's just the news.com on this one. So you could see there's a lot of stuff here. Detroit contracted poll workers from firm owned by key figure in corruption case. And that's also from just the news. Let's see if we got some other. PA counties use electronic voting systems with abandoned operating systems. Well, that doesn't sound good. Uh, oh, that's that's PBS. That's WHYY from 2019. See, you know, a lot of the left-wing news sources, especially back in 2000, were decrying the voting situation. They called all this stuff out. Now, of course, they're like, oh, what? 
Well, there's not that much fraud. Oh, it's it's barely a blip on the radar. Blah. Yeah, in 2000, it wasn't barely a blip on the radar. You, you people were screaming your bloody heads off. Now you're now you're putting them in the sand. And quite frankly, you gave up too easily in 2000. If you go to gregpalast.com, that's P-A-L-A-S-T dot com, um, he is an investigative reporter who laid out all the uh, inconsistencies with the voting system in 2000, uh, especially regarding Florida and the voter rolls there. Now, the computers, of course, weren't as sophisticated as they are now, 20 years later, but they purged the voter rolls, and back then it was, uh, it was a little harder. Um, this one goes all the way into the system itself, and I'm amazed that Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell seem to have infiltrated that system and gotten the evidence, because as easy as this was to do, it's probably almost as easy to destroy the evidence if you were on the ball ready to do so. Uh, but you could just see it goes on and on. Oh, here is a WikiLeaks article, a classified article on Smartmatic from Venezuela. And it, it, you, you may not believe this, but Venezuela is tied into this too because Smartmatic is one of the companies that was tied in with Dominion. And they, you know, were involved with, I think that Smartmatic was... I think it was the name of Dominion before Dominion, I guess, or it was the company that wrote Dominion or something like that. But, um, yeah. So, it seems like every country in the world is working on the voting system in the United States, except America. Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> Not that I would trust Bill Gates or Jack Dorsey or anybody in Silicon Valley to do it, but perhaps uh, we could come up with a pretty easy program just to count like click 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 i'm pretty sure we can um seems like we should otherwise we're gonna have to keep using paper i mean that's the only way it's probably the smartest way too because that way you have a paper backup so you can have the paper ballot you scan it in again need a simple scanning system or maybe you just count them by hand maybe we should count them all by hand all the time and then Save the receipts in case there's a, a recount for a year, you know, a whole year at least, and then do the election that way. I mean, we've done it before. We've done it before, and it's not like we don't have enough volunteers to do this. And quite frankly, we should have a national holiday for voting. I'm all for that. Have a national holiday. Uh, allow people who are participating in the voting system to do so on a day off. Uh, I think it would be great. I think everybody should get involved. Everybody should vote. And then that way, no one has an excuse, right? Oh, you didn't vote today? No, I can't, I can't get off of work. Ah, now you wouldn't have an excuse. You just close down everything. One day. One day. Seems like it's a no-brainer, but it's all kinds of political stuff that jams that up because one side thinks it'll advantage the other side. I mean, the Republicans always thought it would advantage the Democrats. Now it's looking the other way around. So anyhow, I thought I'd point out uh, this site. Uh, I'm going to do some videos later. Uh, I'm not sure when I got some stuff to do, but uh, Joan and I will be back later this evening. Right, Joan? Work, work.